Merci beaucoup, Elaine. Euh, donc, maintenant, nous allons euh, écouter euh, Gert um, Capels, um, qui vient de San Francisco. Um, Gert uh, a publié uh, récemment Power Ballads um, chez Wave Books en 2016. Précédemment, il a publié un livre d'essai uh, qui s'appelle Retrievals, euh, qui est un livre qui porte sur des euh, artistes et écrivains dont il estime qu'ils ne sont euh, pas assez connus ou euh, négligés. Euh, de profession, Gary travaille pour euh, City Lights, la maison d'édition City Lights, euh, et euh, donc il dirige la série euh, Spotlight Poetry Series. Et euh, il a dirigé la publication de nombreux ouvrages, dont les ouvrages de, de John Kiger, euh, Diane De Prima, Michael McClure et euh, David Meltzer. Euh, il a aussi euh, dirigé euh, les œuvres complètes de Philippe Balantia euh, aux presses universitaires de Californie. Euh, les poèmes choisis de Richard O. Moore, euh, le poète et documentariste. Euh, et euh, les euh, poèmes euh, choisis de, qui s'appellent Incidents of Travel in New York euh, de Frank Lima qui ont été publiés par City Lights en euh, 2016 euh, et euh, parallèlement à, donc, à tout ce travail éditorial et à ce travail d'écriture euh, pendant assez longtemps euh, Garrett a écrit euh, sur le hip hop pour euh, le San Francisco Bay Guardian Garrett Cable ouais. Yeah. Uh, thank you. Uh, I feel like I should have applaud for you. Uh, thank you for coming. Uh, <clears throat> thank you, to Michael, for having us and for Olivier for setting it up. And um, I want to read just a paragraph real quick from uh, um, from this book, Retrievals, uh, that uh, they published um, uh, a couple of years ago. Uh, Because um, I was, I got a text today that uh, this uh, really great artist that I wrote about, uh, named Marie Wilson, uh, died uh, today. Uh, she was 95, so she had a pretty good run. Uh, and I just wanted to just read a, just a little paragraph and uh, just acknowledge uh, Marie. Born in Cedarville, California, in 1922, Marie Wilson received a BA from Mills College and an MA from UC Berkeley, but after but afterward fell under the influence of Jean Varda of the Wolfgang Pollen, Gordon Onslow Ford, Paris Surrealist group Dynaton. She was introduced into Surrealist circles in Paris by Pollen in 1952. After a 1954 stint as Picasso's studio assistant, she worked in Pollen's studio. In 1955, André Breton included several of her works in an official Surrealist exhibition at the gallery L'Etoile Scalet. In 1957, he published a full-page photo of one of her paintings in the second issue of his most significant post-war periodical, Le Surrealism Mem. During this period, she met the Greek poet Nanos Valeridis, with whom she collaborated on Terre de Dumont, a book of 16 lithographs accompanied by his poems in French. They would marry in 1960 and spend the ensuing 50-odd years in Greece, Paris, and the Bay Area. Uh, so I just wanted to uh, send a shout out to uh, Marie Wilson. Uh, Thanks. We will start with the, uh, the dual language segment. And uh, this is my uh, book, Power Ballads, uh, that I brought nothing, so uh, <laughs> unfortunately, but uh, uh, that's okay. Uh, I just wanted to uh, read. So, um, This poem's called Hypnagogic Boston. By the little screen where I lie with the dogs and live with no drugs in Ponder the Ponderosa, beneath this heat where my flaming feet repeat the steps I missed the first last time around, a lossless ratio stations itself on guard against the density of imperfected memories. I send postcards abroad to Mr. and Mrs. God, asking if clarity begins at home and hope the answer's no. I know the script's too cryptic to decipher aboard this floating horse. Tell the doctor when to expect my corpse to arrive by riverboat, solely befitting my dignity. 
faire deux remarques avant de lire les traductions. D'une part, un des poèmes qu'on qu va lire un peu plus tard a été choisi comme épigraphe par John Ashbery, un de ses poèmes pour son dernier livre. Et les traductions, en fait, sont aussi bien celles que j'ai faites d'Hélène que celles de, 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 des poèmes de Garrett. Ce euh, sont des travaux en cours. Euh, certains des poèmes sont fondés sur le son, donc, euh, ce qui explique certains changements. Voilà, c'était ma justification. Euh, Boston, hypnagogique. À côté du petit écran, où rivé avec les dogs, je rêve sans drogue, et pense à la pense, par cette chaleur-là, mes pieds en feu répètent les pas que j'ai ratés la première des dernières fois. Un rapport sans sens se place en garde contre la densité des souvenirs inachevés. J'envoie des cartes postales à l'étranger à Monsieur et Madame Dieu, leur demandant si clarté bien ordonnée commence par soi-même, en espérant que la réponse soit non. Je sais que le manuscrit est trop cryptique pour qu'on le déchiffre à bord de ce cheval flottant. Prévenez le docteur quand mon corps arrivera par la rivière en bateau, lentement, comme il s'y est à ma dignité. This one's called Paul Schirmart, and uh, he's a uh, sort of expressionist, uh, quasi-futurist uh, writer, um, and uh, a friend of mine, Andrew Joran, has been translating him from the German, so I thought I would uh, write a little poem about him. Paul Schirmart. I wandered the impossible in search of perpetual motion. The protagonist of my novel was glass architecture. I went broke from agonistic loves. I mourned the books I never wrote, a handbook of the foot, an insider's guide to bullshit. My technical treatise on paper plates would have run 4,000 pages, but only sold one copy, because I'd lose my author copy. What I wrote about didn't exist, but you couldn't make me up. My mustache waxed and waned, gravy stains buttoned my coat long after food became memory. Sadly, I was mistaken on the dirigible's endurance, but I pretty much called skyscrapers an aerial bombardment. Here I am in the past a futurist, a steampunk with dry heaves and a gutta percha gutta. In my last glass act, I wrote my assassin's name on fogged up pince nez and flung them away with transparent childlike grace. They evicted the man behind my beard. He tickled. Um. Donc Garrett expliquait que son ami le poète Andrew Joran est en train d'écrire un livre sur, de, pardon, de traduire uh, les textes de Paul Shearer euh, dessinateur, euh, j'ai oublié les termes euh, quasi-futuristes qu'employait qu euh, euh, Garrett. Paul Shearer, pour Andrew Joran. J'ai parcouru l'impossible en quête du mouvement perpétuel. Le personnage de mon roman était l'architecture de verre. Je me suis ruiné en amours agonistes. Je pleure les livres que je amais, je n'ai écrit. Le manuel du pied, l'ABC de la connerie pour les initiés, mon traité technique des assiettes en carton eut atteint les 4000 pages, mais vendu un seul exemplaire car j'aurais perdu celui de l'auteur. Ce que j'écrivais n'existait pas, mais vous ne pourriez m'inventer. Une moustache cirée et rincée, des taches de sauce en guise de boutonnière de manteau, après que le dîner fut devenu un lointain souvenir. Malheureusement, je m'étais trompé quant à la longévité du dirigeable, mais j'ai pour ainsi dire convoqué les gratte-ciel et les bombardements aériens. Ici, dans le passé, je suis un futuriste, un punk à vapeur avec des treuils mortes, dans une gouttière à un gouta perca, dans mon dernier coup de verre, j'ai écrit le nom de mon assassin sur un pince-nez embué, embué pardon, puis l'ai balancé avec la transparence d'une grâce enfantine. Ils expulsèrent l'homme de derrière ma barbe, il chatouillait. Uh, this one is called uh, Love is Made of Sky. Love is a movie we watch ourselves in, a film we watch ourselves in, a sky that looks askance at the lack of scandalousness and even the most licentious thought, the song of the beleaguered dispatcher herding taxis together, or the hiss of inflatable ramps sliding down desire. Love is a cloud in the sky that's also love. I remember today like it was yesterday, I open a door and there stands love, ready to get down, and I'm like, whoa, we just met, and love's like, I don't care. <laughs> love has a history of such indiscretions. 
A baby wailing on an electric five-string banjo during a piano recital in the library of a red-eye flight to Boston could no more disconcert than love when love comes to town on a fine Arab charger or even a Budweiser Clydesdale. <laughs> love drives whatever it wants and frankly prefers something furrier than the average fuzzy dice. The velvet cheesecake apple pie of the snowbound Vermont mind is dismissed by love as missing the point of the needle, its flawless tenderness and penchant for cool appraising stares below the roof of its wool hat horizon. Love instead noodles Nile Delta blues at 79 RPMs. The RPGs of love explode at the antipodes of St. Dobe Island and Carnal Canal, for love wreaks magic havoc with the music of public life. Love loves it when love does it, because love is a moonlit boxing glove giving the finger to violence. A sky we look upon that tumbles and falls in a bright blue sun in the sky. Love is a risky sky. L'amour est fait de ciel. L'amour est un film où l'on se love, un film où l'on se lave, un ciel qui regarde de travers l'absence de traces de scandale, même dans la pensée la plus licencieuse. La chanson de l'opérateur assiégé qui règle le balai des taxis, ou le sifflement des rampes gonflables quand on descend du désir en glissant. L'amour est un nuage dans le ciel qui est aussi l'amour. Je me souviens d'aujourd'hui comme si c'était hier. J'ouvre une porte et voilà l'amour, prêt à s'agenouiller. Je dis « Wow, on vient juste de se rencontrer » et l'amour n'en a genre rien à faire. L'amour a un long passé d'indiscrétion semblable, un bébé qui pleure en entendant un banjo électrique à cinq cordes pendant un récital de piano dans la bibliothèque d'un vol de nuit pour Boston, n'est pas plus déconcertant que l'amour quand l'amour arrive en ville sur un étalon arabe ou un cheval Clydesdale Budweiser. Oui, difficile à traduire. L'amour conduit ce qu'il veut et préfère franchement quelque chose en bonne vieille peluche plutôt que la pauvre feutrine des dés qu'on accroche au rétro. La tarte à la pomme glaçage cheesesteak, cheesesteak de l'esprit vers mon direction ski, est méprisée par l'amour qui considère qu'elle n'appelle pas un chat, un chat de l'aiguille, ni sa tendresse sans faille, ou son penchant pour les regards et les jugements lestes sous le toit de son horizon de bonnet laineux. Au lieu de cela, l'amour gratte le Nile Delta Blues à 79 tours par minute. Les JDR, jeu de rôle, de l'amour explosent aux antipodes de l'île sainte cam et du canal Charnel, car l'amour fait des ravages magiques au son de la musique de la vie publique. L'amour aime ça, quand l'amour le fait, car l'amour, ce gant de boxe au clair de lune, fait un doigt à la violence. Un ciel que nous observons, qui trébuche et tombe, et un soleil d'un bleu éclatant dans le ciel. L'amour est l'écueil du ciel. This one's called uh, The Chosen, and I wrote this for uh, David Meltzer. And uh, David Meltzer is a really important American poet. Uh, and he died in, um, I, I think, uh, he was the last death of 2016. He died on uh, New Year's Eve, uh, which is very, very classy of him. <laughs> when two of us meet, we know one another by insight. By the brio we rock the quicksilver with, or the weird sucker we offer ourselves in a mirror of single minds. The way our fingers twitch around improvised amulets, the signet burst on our sunburst guitars, or the altitude inside our supine attitude. A ghost of uncertain courtesy sets aside its scythe to admire the view. Animals strike curious poses, posers see and taste and hate. They feel the heat of two of us meeting. When two of us meet, we've known each other all along, an infinite unforgetting of the time another two of us met. We are only part of us. The rest is an ego ago adrift on a silent edge. We burn the candle straight down the middle. A moment is a table we pull up chairs to, to look with naked eye upon eternity. C'est un poème que uh, Garrett a écrit pour le poète uh, David Meltzer, uh, qui est décédé uh, l'année dernière, à la fin d'année 2016. Les élus, pour David Meltzer. Quand deux d'entre nous se croisent, on se reconnaît intuitivement, à l'aisance avec laquelle nous remuons le vif argent ou la curieuse rescousse qu'on s'offre dans un miroir d'esprit individuel. La façon dont nos doigts tremblent en s'enroulant autour d'amulettes improvisées, le cachet brûlé sur nos guitares dégradées sunburst, ou l'altitude à l'intérieur notre mode, pardon, ou l'altitude à l'intérieur de notre molle attitude, un fantôme d'une politesse incertaine range sa faux pour admirer la vue. Les animaux prennent d'étranges poses, les poseurs voient et goûtent et détestent. Ils sentent la chaleur de notre rencontre à deux. Quand deux d'entre nous se croisent, 
Cela fait un bout de temps que nous nous connaissons. Un infini inoubli du moment où deux autres d'entre nous se sont croisés. Nous faisons simplement partie de nous. Le reste n'est qu'ego âgé dérivant à l'air du silence. Nous brûlons la moitié de la bougie. Un moment est une table autour de laquelle nous nous asseyons pour regarder l'éternité à l'œil nu. called uh, the hydropathic way I need another song today something to sing to the boys at the bar to thank them for being there the more I fold the petals of the brass rose called my life the more I sense their drunk abundance in five-minute phone calls and handsome ransom notes when I'm hammered on the anvil underfoot they reintroduce that discontinued line of goods long enough to stock my shelves for a spell I pull up in a coffin but skate away on silver blades to the cathedral of our next encounter already being built. I try to leave the hard stuff back at the mausoleum, but their whiskey holds the key to the city, whistling nonchalantly. Maybe just as once again I'll bend to the tawny brim, but only in August company. If I were an 11th century Japanese prince, I'd write it on pearl white paper and fix sprigs of fur to the envelope and send it off and retire dignified to the garden. And I'd look into the sky and the cold would sting my wide open eyes. Instead, I'm iMacking at 1 a.m., I sit like turrets, taking a shot at the poem with the ammo of memory. Like the song says, they're in my hair, and that's a good look for me. Façon hydropathe. J'ai besoin d'une autre chanson aujourd'hui. Un petit air à chanter pour les gars au bar, pour les remercier d'être là. Plus je plie les pétales de la rose de cuivre, comme j'appelle ma vie, plus je ressens leur ivrogne et abondance en coups de fil de 5 minutes et demande de rançon bien tournée. Quand je suis défoncé sur l'enclume et sous les pieds, ils réintroduisent cette ancienne gamme de produits assez longtemps pour garnir mes étagères quelque temps. Je déboule dans un cercueil, mais repars en patin à lame d'argent jusqu'à la cathédrale de notre prochaine rencontre, déjà en construction. J'essaie de laisser le torboyau au mausolée, mais leur whisky ouvre la porte de la ville en sifflant nonchalamment. Peut-être juste pour cette fois m'approcherai-je du bord fauve, mais seulement en noble compagnie. Si j'étais un prince japonais du XIe siècle, j'écrirais tout cela sur un papier d'une blancheur de perles, j'apposerais des brins de sapin à l'enveloppe et je l'enverrais avant de dignement me retirer dans les jardins et je lèverais le regard au ciel et le froid viendrait alors mordre mes yeux écarquillés. Au lieu de ça, je suis sur mon imac à une heure du mat, les yeux fendus comme des meurtrières, je pars à l'assaut de ce poème avec les munitions de la mémoire. Comme dans la chanson, j'en ai plein les cheveux et ça me va plutôt bien. Je suis sur les Mac. Ou J-Mac, on peut dire J-Mac. All right, this, uh, this poem is called Chiefly, which I wrote chiefly because I wanted to write a poem with an adverb as a title. And, uh, and there's a quotation from uh, Diane de Prima and a quotation from uh, Tupac in there. Here I am king of this ghost republic in love's conspicuous absence, flat-footed and red-handed and stuttering abandon. I enter her charming apartments in search of evidence, how to live among altars to the dead and alive. It's chiefly a mental space whose lucid clutter produces utter clarity now and then. Against the bent of the amplified hit party, she posts letters to the present like, he's got nothing in common with the men who run his mind. It takes a certain kind of nerve to learn to persevere like this, Mama told me there'd be days like this, but I'm pissed because it stays like this. To pray for bliss and face abyss puts a dent in the teeth. Thankfully, my beak can still wreak havoc on my self-esteem as equally, and comfort moves me carrot and stick. Donc, Garrett a écrit ce poème parce qu'il voulait écrire un poème sur un adverbe. Euh, le problème que j'ai eu en traduisant l'adverbe, c'est que je voulais garder chief. Et j'avais pensé à principalement au début, mais ça va peut-être devenir principalement, en tout cas pour l'instant c'est au premier chef. Au premier chef. Me voilà roi de cette république fantôme, en l'absence flagrante de l'amour, les pieds dans le plat et la main dans le sac, en bègue abandon. Je pénètre dans ces charmants appartements à la recherche de preuves. Comment vivre au milieu d'hôtels, aux morts et vivants C'est au premier chef un espace mental dont le fatra lucide produit une pure clarté de temps en temps. Contre la tendance de la fête générale des Pecnaux, elle envoie des lettres au présent. 
comme « il n'a rien à voir avec les hommes qui contrôlent son esprit ». Cela requiert un certain courage d'apprendre à persévérer ainsi. Maman m'a prévenu qu'il y aurait des jours comme ça, mais je suis furax que ça reste comme ça. Prier que de joie l'on s'anime et faire face à l'abîme vous fout un coup dans les dents. Heureusement, mon bec peut toujours mettre la pagaille dans mon amour propre, toute chose égale, et le réconfort m'échappe, carotte et bâton. It's called Travels in Russia, and uh, I stole most of this from Théophile Gaudier. The beds in Russia are worthless, so the overstuffed green leather couch is more than a tongue for this lack of comfort. Wrapped in my sealskin police, with a beaver hat worthless in Paris but much prized here, I obtain such semblance of sleep as I'm able without a CPAP machine, which looks like a Russian word. Bring me my sickle for gouging in an Uber on skis behind hairy nags, and I'm good to go to the carnival to negotiate for Chinese tea. The Byzantine forms are the only ones available to express my feelings for an onion dome basilica blooming against a harvest moon. If I infiltrate the Kremlin disguised as a nun, that's my own business. If I eat too many herrings before the main course, that's one more elk steak for you. The whole point of coming here is to bring back shrunken customs in tiny Ziploc bags or press between the pages of my latest book of poems. Posterity will reward me for noticing those things that escape the Russians themselves, like the color of the air they breathe, the odor of a vodka-fueled radiator. On the deck of a steamer to Novgorod, where the Oka meets the Volga, I'll hurl myself onto a coil of rope and get a better night's sleep than I could in a bed at the Hotel Angleterre in St. Petersburg. By the end of the ballet, I'm sweating buckets. I retreat to my room to bathe myself in cool cigars and contemplate steel blue twilight through the fine layer of sand sprinkled between the panes of the double window. It's for my own protection. This one's called Anti-Nostalgia. Remembering the sadness of my life, not to mention his. Sometimes it snows in April in Minneapolis. Our country lurched hard right to never be seen again. He was my only friend. My eyes gazed in the dressing room mirror. He told me how fine I looked. My finger hung fire by my cheek, neglecting to smear foundation. He thought I'd lost my way. We hurt each other purposely. I have PTSD from the Bush administration. He felt the same way. If only she'd loved him enough. We stirred flat water prophecies into a copper bowl, only to blow interpretation. He identified with me in a way that's productive, but also a projection of himself. He identified with himself. I was his mirror. He was my chef, he said, I'll cook for you. The accurate understanding was well nigh impossible. I still believe in the art he made then, but I don't believe in me. Or so he said, I don't believe her. By the end, my vocals became syllables, mere symbols of belief. He didn't have to. When we were, we were done, when he discovered my name was Walker, I pointed to film history. In reply, she noted how much she could find online now that I was dead. He said, you're kidding me, when? I said, it's happening now. Anybody know who Willie Loco Alexander is? Have you heard him? He's a uh, he's an interesting musician. He was on a French label for about ten years in the eighties. So uh, I thought I'd read a little poem for Willie. Uh, Willie Alexander deserves his own poem. Alex Chilton of Boston, T Rex of Triceratops, 
Johnny Thunders without the misogyny, Moog masterpiece, Mambo Sun, punk influenced by his own garage band, as old as Mick Jagger, what's lost in remains, invective against gin misinterpreted, rock and roll 78, Harry James, Rhodes piano, die of the lasting bleed. I attribute my feelings to him the way you do to songwriters. Dirty Eddie don't care at all about Marilyn Monroe, Joe DiMaggio, stole Taxi Stand Diane from Jeepster, some kind of car reference there. Thankless Task, the Boston rocker. Aerosmith, the Cars, Jay Giles. Boston Till Tuesday, Morphine. Muddy Mighty Bostones. Scruffy the fucking cat. Got my kicks on V66. The Martin Lovers, Harvard Square. The Grolier, Algiers, the Brattle. A hush is holding his breath, Vincent Farini said. Life is the poem. I hope so. John Ashbury and climate change. <laughs> you gotta pardon my terrible French pronunciation. Is it Mil Michel Lurie? Is that how you say it? Lurie? You use the same thing? Yes, okay. Reading the Africa Phantom by Michel Lurie, when I realize you're the only guy I know or knew who knew Lurie. I'm waiting in that pool. I'm doing foolish things you do at 45 and realize it's been 10 years since I mentioned my age in a poem. <laughs> What's it mean? Over there, can you hear? I'm down below like Leonora Carrington, who died on my 39th birthday. I liked it when she was alive. As for you, it's like a break in the permafrost. To watch that det detached iceberg melt into lukewarm permanence. Marco's dog Bruce died as he lived, barking at horses and hurling himself over a balcony to protest this violation of the order of things. If he'd been born in Medellin instead of Oakland, it might have been different. But if it wasn't horses, it would have been geese or, God forbid, a skateboard, a bike, or some other human activity he couldn't countenance. He was that kind of dog, but a sweetheart at the same time who wouldn't hesitate to growl at you if he wasn't in the mood. Complex personality. He lived outside a while and it changes you. The kind of dog that looks gleefully over his shoulder to see if he's pissing you off. The only dog I've ever seen howl in joy or triumph. His comedic timing was impeccable, as evidenced by our collaboration on the film Three Poems, when he plants his paw on my manuscript right as I say the script's too cryptic. <laughs> he ranks with the dogs of literature and history and film, so make room for daddy, Rin Tin Tin, and tell Marco we're still friends for life if he doesn't know it yet. This last one is called Lovers, Lovers of Today. Lovers of Today is the name of the bar on the Lower East Side where the bartender pours drinks for free after I run out of cash. And I wake the woman from Airbnb at 8, 4 a.m. because I can't unlock the door and make phone calls I won't remember. We get bus in New York. Two nights later, much more sober, fall on the pavement in Brooklyn, manage not to break anything though it hurts like hell in the morning, my wrist hurts today as I type. And I buy a book at First and Twelfth by D.A. Levy, and I buy a book at Mast by Meltzer, and I buy a book at The Strand by Nicholas Breton, Gentleman, and I eat a bacon, egg, and cheese and wonder why it can't be done in San Francisco. <laughs> a million reasons, but that's what makes viable travel under late capitalism. And I miss Anselm and John Coletti, and Alan Gilbert, though we speak, and Kent Picasso and Lamont Young. And the night I fall and reading poems by Wieners and Lemur with Anthony Cedar and Joshua, and that's what makes that town the best. Thank you.